welcome to the deep dive. You know, for decades, the whole global quest for an HF AIDS vaccine, it's felt like it's a really intense race against time. And while it's been long, it's been challenging. But what really struck me reading these sources was the uh, quiet, persistent progress, especially in places you might not immediately think of. Today, we're doing a deep dive into something truly promising, I think. Critical, really. It's the significant strides HIV vaccine research is making in Russia. I mean, we've had amazing tools like ART, antiretroviral therapy, and pre-exposure you know, pre prophylaxis. They've been absolutely vital for managing the epidemic. But a widely available vaccine, that's still the ultimate goal, isn't it, for really getting widespread control. So our journey today is based on some really compelling stuff. A key study from the PMC that's PubMed Central, an official U.S. government site, is titled HIV AIDS Vaccines in Russia, Clinical Trials and Estimation of Acceptance in Population. Yeah. And we've also got a related article, Russia's HIV Vaccine Quest, Trials and Public Readiness, which gives us uh, even more context. Our mission today, well, is to unpack these findings, to reveal not just the scientific breakthroughs, but also maybe more surprisingly, the very human factors, the things that will kind of make or break this whole global health effort. This should give you a shortcut, really, to understanding where we stand on this critical challenge. So uh, let's roll up our sleeves. Let's dig in. Yeah, and it's fascinating because Russia has been making these steady, quiet advancements in HIV vaccine research. It's not always front page news, but it's happening. They actually have multiple candidates moving through early clinical trials, which, you know, in the world of vaccine development, that's a very positive sign, strategic even. Okay, and the sources highlight one candidate in particular, Vikrapal. Can you tell us a bit about that one? What makes it stand out? Sure. Vitropol, it's what's called a conjugated polymer subunit HIV vaccine. Basically, in simpler terms, it uses specific pieces of the virus, not the whole thing, to uh, train your immune system. So that makes it inherently quite safe. It was developed at the Moscow Institute of Immunology, and its progress is pretty significant because it successfully passed phase I clinical trials. Okay, phase I. Which means it demonstrated safety in human volunteers. And crucially, it also showed it stimulates an immune response. So not just safe, but it's actively getting the immune system to, like, recognize HIV. That's exactly what you want a vaccine to do. Precisely. That's the goal of that stage. That sounds like a huge step towards actual protection. What's the next big hurdle then after phase one? What do you look for? Absolutely. It's a key milestone. And now Vitropol is entering phase two clinical trials. Phase two is where its effectiveness gets tested and a much larger group of people this time. So the major hurdle here is really seeing how well it works in a more real world type setting. Does that immune response actually translate into protection? That's the big question. Right, but Vitropol isn't the only horse in the race, is it? The sources mentioned others too. Are they similar or are they trying different angles? That's correct, yeah. Besides Vitropol, there are two other candidates that have also completed phase one. One is a DNA-based vaccine. Uh, that basically gives your cells instructions to build a part of the virus so your immune system can learn from it. And the other is a viral vector-based vaccine that uses a harmless virus, almost like a delivery truck, for those instructions. Different technologies, then. Exactly. And stepping back, what's really quite clever here is this strategic, um, multi-pronged approach. Each of these vaccines uses a different technological platform, a different way to try and stimulate the immune system. This isn't just about you know, having backups, it's about resilience. HIV is a tough nut to crack. So by diversifying their approach, they're kind of hedging their bets against the uncertainties. It significantly increases the overall chances of finding something that works. That multi-pronged approach, it sounds like a smart gamble. A necessary one, really, given how complex HIV is. Okay, so we've seen these impressive strides on the science side. But here's the reality check, right? Hmm. Even the most brilliant vaccine just sitting in a lab, well, it won't stop an epidemic if people aren't willing to actually take it. Which brings us to that equal crucial part, the human element that these sources explore. What did the studies find? How ready are people really to embrace this? That's such a vital point. And yes, they looked into this. There was a pilot study done in the Moscow region specifically exploring this question. It involved uh, 416 people aged 16 to 55, about 61 percent men, 39% women. So a decent snapshot. Okay, 416 people. And the headline finding was 60% said they were ready to be vaccinated. That sounds okay. 
promising, maybe. Right. But I bet there's more to it than just that number. Oh, absolutely. There always is. When you dig deeper, you start seeing some really critical factors influencing that number. For instance, look at risk perception. Among people who identify themselves as being at higher risk of getting HIV, readiness was much higher, 79%. 79%, okay. But among those who believed they were not at risk, readiness just plummeted, down to only 48%. Oh, like a huge gap. 48%. Yeah. It really highlights this clear perception gap, doesn't it? It tells us it's not just enough to have the vaccine. You have to solve this fundamental human puzzle. How do you convince someone they might need it if they don't feel at risk? And this isn't just a challenge for Russia, you know. It's basically a blueprint for public health campaigns everywhere. Yeah, that risk perception piece is key. And there was another interesting finding related to family status, parental influence. The study found readiness for HIV vaccination was actually 20% lower in respondents who had children compared to those who didn't. 20% lower for parents. Huh. Any idea why that might be? Different concerns, maybe? It suggests maybe a different set of concerns, yeah. Or priorities, perhaps, when you have dependents to think about. The study didn't fully explore the why, but the difference was clear. Okay, so perceived risk, family status, they both play a role. But what about the vaccine itself? Did how well people thought it would work matter? Its effectiveness. Oh, massively. Yes, it mattered dramatically. The willingness to get vaccinated shot up with perceived efficacy. So, for example, if people thought the vaccine was only, say, 30 percent effective, readiness scored just 3.5 out of 10. Pretty low. 3.5. Right. At 50 percent efficacy, it went up to 5.2 out of 10. Better, but still lukewarm. OK. But... If the vaccine was perceived as being 90% to 95% effective, readiness soared to 8.8 .8 out of 10. Wow, 8.8. .8. That's a huge jump. It really is. It's almost like, you know, a graded scale for public trust. People are basically saying, show me it works really well and I'm in. Yep. It just underscores how critical trust in the actual effectiveness is for public acceptance. You need to demonstrate it works. Efficacy is clearly a make or break factor then. Mm. But what else? Did the study uncover other sort of practical hurdles, or maybe even opportunities for getting the vaccine out there. Yes, practical things weighed heavily, too. Cost, for example. That came up. About 20% of the respondents said they'd only accept the vaccine if it were free. Only if free. Whereas 45% were actually willing to pay something for it. So cost is definitely a significant barrier for a big chunk of the population. Accessibility matters. Makes sense. Anything else practical? Yeah, things like the number of doses required. You know, is it one shot or three? Potential side effects, obviously. And how long the protection lasts. People want convenience and they want reassurance, understandably. What's also quite striking is how Russia's readiness compares internationally, based on the data mentioned. In the general population, Russia's 60% readiness figure, it's lower than the 78% reported in some other countries mentioned in the studies. 78% elsewhere. Interesting. And even more so in high-risk groups. It was 79% in Russia versus 95% to 97% readiness reported elsewhere for similar groups. 95 to 97. Wow. Yeah. So that suggests there might be a specific local challenge in Russia regarding public engagement or trust around vaccination for HIV. Okay. So if we pull all this together, the science is moving forward. Yeah. Vegetable phase two, other candidates. But the public acceptance has these nuances. What does this all mean for the path forward for HIV prevention? Well, placing it in that global context, those lower acceptance rates in Russia, especially when you compare them, it really highlights an urgent need, I think, a need for really robust public education campaigns. Education, right. These campaigns would need to be super clear about the vaccine development process, you know, how safety is checked and its potential role in prevention. Basically, you need to close that perception gap we talked about, address the concerns about risk, efficacy, cost, all of it. So tackling the human side is just as important as the science. Exactly. But looking at the bigger picture, Russia's scientific progress is a major step forward. It could potentially move the country beyond relying solely on treatment and current prevention strategies. It opens the door to potentially offering long-term protection against HIV through vaccination. That would be a truly transformative shift if it pans out. That really does bring a hopeful outlook, doesn't it? If these trials, like Forfitropol, are successful, a Russian HIV vaccine could bring hope not just within Russia, but genuinely contribute to the global fight against HIV AIDS. But as you said, that widespread impact. It seems absolutely contingent on getting those educational programs right, building public trust, and having consistent government support to make sure it actually reaches the people who need it. Okay, so just to quickly wrap up our deep dive today, we've seen Russia making steady headway in HIV vaccine research. 
promising candidates like Vitropol leading the charge, getting through phase one, now into phase two, that multi-pronged approach too. And then we uncovered these really crucial insights from the population study, how complex public readiness is. It's influenced by everything from how well people think the vaccine works to the cost, to their own sense of risk, even their family situation. So yeah, the fight against HIV, it's definitely far from over. But the science does seem to be catching up. Vaccines like these ones in development could soon give us powerful new tools. Really help us, hopefully, turn a corner in this global health challenge. And maybe here's a final thought to leave you with. Well, these scientific breakthroughs, vaccine development, are monumental, right? Absolutely huge. But this deep dive really shows us that the real breakthrough on public health, it often hinges just as much on understanding and navigating us. Human perception, societal readiness. What more might we need to learn about ourselves, about our societies, to truly embrace the global health solutions we develop? Something to think about.